जी 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 फार्मा में होता हूँ हाँ फार्मा डिपार्टमेंट है ना यही होता हूँ मैं ज्यादातर अच्छा अच्छा चलो ठीक है सही सही ठीक है नहीं नहीं फ्रेंड नहीं इधर आना बंद कर दो तब क्या ऐसे बंद कर अरे नहीं नहीं हेलो जी मैडम सलाम लेको हेलो जी मैडम स्टार्ट कर रहा हूँ मैं क्लास में स्टार्ट कर दें यस है क्लास है शुरू कर दीजिए टाइम हो गया आपका हाँ तो मेरी आवाज तो क्लियर आ रही है ना जी सर आपकी आवाज आ रही है क्लियर चले मैं शुरू करा रहा हूँ मैं शुरू करा रहा हूँ ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू ओके अवर टुडे टॉपिक इज एंटेलमेंटिक्स दैट मींस द ड्रग्स दैट वी कैन यूज अगेंस्ट द वॉम इन्फेस्टेशन or against the treatment of worms right my name is dr imran from the international medical college okay antihelminthes are drugs used in the treatment of infection with helminths that already we have discussed that worms basically the helminths means worms right in the intestinal tract as well as tissues of the body so ant helminthics that uh, are responsible uh, and cause killing of the worms we can label as vermicide and the drugs that help to expel the worms so that can be label as uh, vermifuges right so these are the terms that you know so this is very important uh, slide i must say we have categorized uh, worms into three uh, broader groups nematodes also labeled as round worms trematodes labeled as flukes and cestodes labeled as tape worms so recently we have uh, conducted the uh, third year exam and uh, uh, yesterday was the uh, last day so uh, there was a station related to this ant uh, helminthics right and the external external they used to ask okay what is the drug of choice uh, in the treatment of round worms some of the external asked okay what is the drug of choice first choice uh, for the tape worms or cestodes so first what you must know these major groups nematodes trematodes and cestodes there are individual worms as well but the first point that you must know is the classification round worms flukes tape worms and their drug of first choices right this is very important okay so this is the relative incidence of uh, helminth infections worldwide the most common the most common uh, scariis lumbricoids that is responsible to cause scariasis and the very interesting point what is that interesting point in pakistan you know in pakistan 17 million of the children between the age of 5 to 15 years having worm infestations and another very uh, important point and you will be shocked that in uh, out of 17 million you know 4.6 million children having worms in karachi right so you can say it's a it's a big city and but again there is a problem sanitation problem right and so this is one of the reason so it's very interesting that in spite of a big city the highest burden if we talk about the whole country so 4.6 million worm infestation in our children 5 to 15 years uh, in especially in karachi and so in pakistan again uh, the highest incidence is caused by uh, scaries lumbricoids just like the uh, uh, worldwide right and second most common in pakistan the worm that is the pen worm 
and the pinworm is also called uh, enterobius vermicularis you know worldwide uh, if we count it is on 2 3 4 on fifth number but in pakistan it is on second number highest percentage with scariis cumbricoid just like the uh, entire world but on second number the uh, uh, enterobius vermicularis uh, having the highest incidence of worm infestation in pakistan right so the next slide now one by one intestinal round worms that is labeled as nematodes this you must know what are nematodes nematodes are round worms right so in this group we have different worms scariis lumbricoides uh, again the common round worm enchirostoma judinali that is also labeled as hook worm right and the tracheuris tracheuria that is also called whip worm which rarely bend crafting that is responsible to cause filariasis and this is one of the condition that occur in pakistan right enterobius vermicularis this is pin worm right the strongyloides the uh, cercoralis that is also called thread worms and oncocerca vulvulus that is responsible to cause oncocerciasis so these are the uh, common worms intestinal worms labeled as nematodes right so what at least you must know about the three or four or names of this group right is uh, scariis lumbricoides and gyrostoma judinali enterobius trumpularis wishraia bancrofti tracheus tracheuria now a uh, drug of choice this point already i have shared with all of you that in the recent exam what uh, we conducted uh, in past three or four days so there was always a station right from the infectious module because you know in third year we have uh, infectious module respiratory module cardiovascular module right so there was a station there was a case that was related to worm infestation so the easiest question okay what are the drugs that you can use uh, against the uh, round worms scariis lumbricoides and again i am repeating you know in pakistan not in pakistan but all over the world this is one of the worm that that's incidence or occurrence is highest scariis lumbricoides right round worm so uh, drug of choice in this case mebendazole or parenteral palmitate or albendazole what does it mean that means mebendazole can be given or parenteral palmitate can be given one drug right or means ya to mebendazole ya phir parenteral palmitate ya phir albendazole right there is well, we haven't mentioned the and and means combination but here individual either you are giving mebendazole and all three drugs are equally effective right against the treatment of scariis lumbricoides mebendazole or parenteral palmitate or albendazole right so this is you know scariis lumbricoides and ankylostoma judinali hook worm right so against these worms drug of first choice either mebendazole or parenteral palmitate or albendazole right okay and the tracheuris tracheuria that is whip worm in which mebendazole or albendazole is the drug of choice now this is very important point from the exam point of view okay which really i been crafty that is responsible to cause a disease that is called filariasis and this is one of the commonly asked question in the viva right filariasis is caused by uh usteria bancrofti and filariasis is also called elephantiasis okay so drug of first choice this is from the bcq point of view very important point that you must remember so in the treatment of filariasis 
which is caused by Wilshreria bancrofti, the drug of first choice, diethyl carbamazine. You must remember this, the drug of first choice, inflariasis, which is responsible to cause uh, elephantiasis, the drug of first choice is diethyl carbamazine, right? Then in aerobius vermicularis, pinworm, second highest in Pakistan, first highest is the scarystum recoids, and the second highest, uh, that is the pinworm, in aerobius vermicularis. Again, you can see the same drug, Mebendazole or parental palmoid, just like scaris lumbricoids. But here there is a difference. The strongyloids, the stercoralis, that is thread worms or oncocircular bulbulus, oncocircaeasis is the disease. In these two examples, the drug of first choice is ivermectin. So in the subsequent slide, we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of these individual drugs. Okay, the second group that is the trematodes. So if we just revise the important point, okay, if anyone asks, okay, what are the drugs that you can use uh, against the roundworm or nematodes? You will say mebendazole and parental palmoate, albendazole, ivermectin, and there is a specific drug, diethyl carbamazine, which is specifically given in the treatment of filariasis, which is caused by Vishraya Bancroft, right? So now the second group is the trematodes, that is also labeled as flukes, schistosoma, hematobium, schistosoma, mansoni, these are the different examples, right? And all of the trematodes, this is very easy to remember, right? All the trematodes, except there is one type that is fasciola hepatica, that is the sheep liver flu, in which the drug is different, right? In which drug is different. Otherwise, generally, the drug of first choice against the trematodes, against the flukes, you will say praziquantel, right? This you must know. Praziquantel is the drug of first choice for the treatment of uh, uh, trematodes, flukes, right? Bithionol, that is the specific drug and uh, that is effective against fasciola hepatica, sheep liver flu. But if you don't remember, no problem. But you must remember what? The drug of first choice against the trematode group is praziquantel. The third group, that is the tapeworms and cestodes, in which we have two very important examples. Tinea saginata, that is the beef tape form. And tinea sodium, that is the pork tape form. Sometimes we get confused. Okay, some of the, if you ask pork tape form, we say tinea saginata. If you ask beef tape form, we say tinea sodium. No, don't get confused. You must clear that tinea saginata, beef tape form, and tinea sodium, pork tape form, right? So in these two, the drug of first choice, is the praziquantel. In the past, uh, there was a drug that is labeled as niclosamide. Niclosamide. So in the olden days, niclosamide was supposed to be the drug of first choice against the cystodes. But in a current practice, in the current uh, medical knowledge, now most of the authorities suggest that praziquantel would be more effective against these cestodes, but niclosamide can be given. So that is why we have mentioned both praziquantel or niclosamide. If you say, okay, niclosamide is supposed to be the drug of first choice in cestode, examiner will say, okay, there is another drug that can also be given. Then you will say, okay, praziquantel, right? So now Last two, cystic sarcosis. What is this? This is very important condition, clinical condition. And that is due to poke tape form larval stage. The larva of the poke tape form is responsible to cause cystic sarcosis, right? And the second one, echinococcus granulosus, hydrated disease. That is label as hydrated disease. And uh, when I was uh, doing my house job in JPMC, I have seen the 
uh, uh, case of this echinococcus granulosus hereditary disease in which uh, cysts are going to form right so uh, this is very important condition especially in our setup in pakistan setup that is the echinococcus granulosus is responsible to cause which disease hydated disease right and what is cysts are causes that is the larva basically if the larva is responsible uh, to cause cysts right so uh, this larva is from the oak tape form that is called cystic fossil and you must remember the drug of first choice against these two conditions albendazole right albendazole so one important clinical condition filariasis diethyl carbamazine and cystic cirrhosis a kind of coccus granulosus which is responsible to cause hydatid disease Uh, the drug of first choice albendazole right and a broader group uh, covered by prazequantel in terms of trematodes not only cover trematodes but also cover tapeworms so i think it is easier to uh, uh, memorize these three or four important points now one by one because this albendazole is uh, supposed to be the very important drug and i just want to recall okay albendazole you know we have mentioned albendazole uh, against round worm it is given here you can see scaris lumbricoides and calisoma duodenale this either mebendazole or parenteral formate or albendazole so uh, this is one of the use then in the uh cystic cirrhosis and echinococcus granulosus again the drug of first choice albendazole so this is very important drug now mechanism of action and this mechanism of action usually mechanism of action and some uh, side effects that we ask in the exam from the uh, if we say from the clinical point of view these two things are important from the exam point of view okay what is the mechanism of action of albendazole so how it's going to uh, affect uh, produces its activity on worms right so drug and its metabolite albendazole sulfoxide bind to beta tubulin structure of worm and it will inhibit microtubule synthesis so what will happen impairs glucose uptake by the parasite so you are going to block uh, its energy source right impairs glucose uptake by the parasites and parasites are immobilized or die slowly right key points larvicidal effects in hydatid disease cystic cirrhosis scariasis and hookworm and it also produces ovicidal effects in scariasis and calistomiasis and trichuriasis right but what 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 is a general point that you must remember it is effective against the scaris lumbricoid in calistoma duodenale and effective against cystic cirrhosis which, which is the larval stage of oak tape worm and it is very much effective against the echinococcus granulosus which is responsible to produce hydatid disease if you know this point i think that is more than enough now pharmacokinetics you know all the uh and helminthics they are given orally right so given orally albendazole is administered on an empty stomach when used against intraluminal parasites but with a fatty meal this is very interesting right because if you will give with fatty meal what will happen maximum drug is going to get absorbed when the drug is going to get absorbed from the intestine so less amount would be available in the intestine but if you are going to treat intestinal worms so maximum concentration is required within the lumen so if less absorption is there that would be uh, beneficial maximally right for uh, luminal worms right so that is why if we give it, uh, it on empty stomach so uh, least absorption from the uh, stomach from the intestine so maximum drug would be available 
uh, within the lumen, right? So maximum concentration available, so maximum activity will produce. But if we are going to use albendazole against the tissue, like uh, for example, the uh, larva, which is uh, present in the, suppose in the brain and any other tissues, right? So this drug has to enter into the bloodstream, so the blood, when the blood will move and will reach the site of action, so it can produces its activity. So for tissue activity, maximum absorption is required. And for luminal activity, it is better, maximum drug would be available within the lumen. So least absorption is required, okay? Okay, produces active metabolite, albendazole, sulfoxide, this active metabolite is widely distributed into various tissues, including hydrated cysts. This is what I was telling you about. This is hydrated disease. Hai. Cysts, in this condition, mein kya hota hai? cysts are formed. Right? Cysts are formed. Right? So this active metabolite is uh, very much effective and because of its metabolite of albendazole, right so that is why it is very much effective against the cystic disease like caused by cystic sarcosis and caused by a kind of focus granulosis which is labeled as hydrated disease because it can reaches the site of action penetrate the cyst and enter into the cyst adverse reactions when used for one to three days albendazole is nearly free of significant adverse effects Mild and transient epigastric distress, diarrhea, headache, nausea, dizziness, residue, and insomnia. In humans, rare fatalities due to a granulocytosis or pancytopenia occur during long term use. So, generally, it is devoid of uh, some serious side effects. Now, the second drug uh, that is the mebendazole. Uh, pharmacokinetic, the mechanism of action is same. That is why I have mentioned the mechanism of action. The mechanism of action is just like albendazole. Uh, it inhibits the activity of uh, tubulin structure. So it will impair the glucose uptake. So uh, when you are going to stop the energy source in that parasite, so it will immobilize when there is devoid of energy. So ultimately, slowly is going to die. So same mechanism of action, mebendazole and albendazole, same mechanism of action, right? So that is why uh, I have mentioned. So pharmacokinetics, okay, administered orally, poorly absorbed from the GI tract. So this is a very interesting point. So this, we, we, we are required because if the drug is poorly absorbed, so that means the maximum drug will be available within the lumen. So maximum activity we can achieve, right? So highly bound to plasma protein, but this mebendazole cannot be used uh, in case of tissue manifestation. Like we cannot use in case of cystic sarcosis. We cannot use against the uh, echinococcus granulosis, which is responsible to produce hydrated disease in which cysts are formed, right? Why? Because it cannot crosses the lipid bilayer. So max, uh, poor absorption, but it would be effective for the uh, luminal or intestinal warm infestation, right? Like uh, scaries and reports that already we have mentioned in the uh, initial slides where we can use mebendazole as drug of first choice. Metabolize in the liver. Most of the drug is excreted in faces and does not require fasting or Purging. Purging means sometimes after uh, starting the uh, anti alimentic drugs because worms are immobilized or die, but they, they are remain in the uh, lumen. And when the luminal activity or peristaltic activity or with the normal uh, uh, evacuating activity, bowel evacuating activity. So it will be evacuated slowly. So if we want to clear the lumen of immobilized worm or uh, dying worm, we can use the purgatives, right? Purgatives or laxative that enhances the peristaltic activity. So we can uh, quickly 
clear the uh, immobilized worms or dying worms from the intestine. Okay, adverse effects, systemic toxicity is low uh, and that is the uh, logical point. And uh, again, this is one of the beneficial point. This concept, you must clear this concept because anything which is entered into the blood, so blood will move throughout the body. So increased chances of side effects. But the drug, if drug is poorly absorbed, that means the local effect is maximum and the systemic effect is minimum, right? So mainly the side effects related to that local activity. That means the main side effects would be related to GIT disturbance. Rarely cause anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal discomfort. Occasionally may cause skin rashes, itching, drug fever, etc. Contraindicated in pregnancy and children below one year. This is important point of Mabendazon. Now this parental palm weight, again, because in Pakistan, the most common round worm or nematodes in the beginning, I told you, and again, I am repeating, that is the scaris lumbricoids. And in the initial slide, I have mentioned the drug of first choice against the scaris lumbricoids, either we can give mebendazole or parental palm weight or albendazole. Right, so we have discussed the mebendazole, we have discussed the albendazole, now we are discussing parental palm weight. Okay, what is the mechanism of action? And already I told you, uh, as far as the anti drugs are concerned, mechanism of action is important and some important clinical indication, like already I've mentioned, the drug of first choice in hydrated disease. This is commonly asked question, which is caused by gynecococcus granulosus, albendazole, which is the drug of first choice in uh, cystocercosis, which is caused by the larva of the poke tapeworm. Again, albendazole is the drug of first choice. What is the drug of first choice in the treatment of filariasis, which can cause uh, also called uh, elephantiasis, which is caused by Bushraria bancrofti, diethyl carbamazine. So these points you must remember. So parental palm weight mechanism of action, it stimulates nicotinic receptors, that is the direct effect, and inhibits choline esterase activity, increase acetylcholine concentration, so persistent depolarization. So powerful contraction, so it will lead to spastic paralysis, right? And worms are expert. So in short, parental palm weight producing its activity by stimulating nicotinic receptor and increase activity of acetylcholine that will lead to powerful depolarization or contraction. So it will lead to paralysis of the worms. So parental is parental palm weight is effective against mature and immature forms of susceptible helminths within the intestinal tract but not against migratory stages in the tissues or against ova, right? So just like abendazole that cannot be used against the uh, uh, tissue, uh, uh, tissue level or parental palm weight. So it will produce its activity within the lumen. If there is a need to use the drug, that suppose there is a larva reaches the brain and in brain it forms the cyst, right? In ocular tissue, it forms the cyst. So sometimes it may cause blindness. So in that situation, the drug which can crosses the lipid bilayer, which, which are able to get absorbed from the GIT can enter into the systemic circulation, then it can reach the site of action, right? So albendazole has the property of this, but mebendazole and parental palm oil, they have poor absorption. So the maximum effect we will get uh, if we are treating it against the intestinal worms, not against the tissue level, clear? Pharmacokinetics given orally, again, this point poorly absorbed. And this is the reason we cannot use uh, as a systemic drug. 80 to 90% is excreted in the faces 
and doesn't require fasting or purging. So, uh, in, if you, so that is why in the recent past, this drug was supposed to be the drug of first choice in Pakistan for scariest limbic oils because there is no need to uh, give the uh, laxative or purgatives after using this parental palm weight. Adverse effects, well tolerated. This is another reason of using this. May cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, dizziness, skin rashes, and fever. Contraindicated in infants. Okay, diethyl carbamazine. You know, this drug is supposed to be the drug of first choice in which condition? Filariasis, which is caused by Bushraria bancrofti, and that this filariasis is also responsible to cause a condition that is called elephantiasis. And mechanism of action, diethyl carbamazine immobilizes microflare, which results in their displacement in tissues, right? So alters their surface structure, making them more susceptible to destruction by host defense mechanism. So basically, diethyl carbamazine immobilizes microflare, right? Because when there is no movement of macroflurry, so we can minimize its transportation. So uh, it is it would be difficult to reach the different tissues, right? So pharmacokinetics well absorbed from GIT, widely distributed in the body, metabolized in the liver, and is created in urine. Safe for use during pregnancy. Urinary alkalosis or renal impairment may require dose reduction. Adverse effects, drug induced effect. Okay, sometimes very interesting point. Sometimes when the parasites are dying, they are releasing some substances which are responsible to cause the some serious side effects. So that is why that would be labeled as the parasite induced reaction, right? The side effect that is due to drug itself and the second reaction or side effect that is not due to drug, but when we kill the uh, worm, so dying worms, they are releasing some substances and that are responsible to produce some serious side effects. So that is called parasite induced reaction. So first we discuss drug induced effects. Reactions to diethyl carbamazine itself are mild and transient and it start within two to four hours. Headache, malaise, anorexia, and weakness are frequent. Nausea, vomiting, dizziness, and sleepiness occur less often. Parasite-induced reaction. Now, this is important from the exam point of view, right? BCQ point of view. Uh, Parasite-induced reaction as a result of the release of foreign proteins from dying microflare or adult worms in sensitized patients. That means not in every patient, but in sensitized patient. This reaction is termed as Mazzotti reaction. This you must know, okay? So Mazzotti reaction basically uh, is the reaction that is uh, induced by parasite dying uh, uh, worms. And when we use especially diethyl carbamazine uh, for immobilizing the activity of microflare. And what are the characteristic features and what you will absorb in Mazzotti reaction? Mazzotti reaction characterized by fever, skin, rashes, and myalgia, malaise, headache, and arthralgia. Isonophilia and leukocytosis are usually intensified, right? So this is important Mazzotti reaction. This you must know. Now, Ivermectin. Can you recall something when we say ivermectin? Because there are two conditions in which ivermectin is supposed to be the drug of first choice. Here you can see from the initial slides, the strong eloids, the sarcoralis, thread worms, right? And oncocerca vulvulus, oncocercaeases. So these are out of these two, this uh, strong eloids, the sarcoralis or thread worm infection, that is important. The drug of first choice is ivermectin. So these are the two conditions in which ivermectin can be used as a drug of first choice. So mechanism of action of ivermectin, potentiate 
glutamate-gated chloride channels. So also increases uh, GABA transmission in worms. So all these two mechanism, what it will lead to? It will lead to hyperpolarization and paralysis of the worms, right? Very two important points. Paralysis occur if you are going to avoid the process of depolarization and contraction. When there is no contraction, there is no movement. This is one of the mechanisms of paralysis. Or you can, you can produce paralysis by exhausting the muscles. And that we will achieve by enhancing the process of depolarization. What we have discussed in case of uh, stimulating nicotinic receptor, increased contraction that will uh, be responsible to exhaust the muscle and it will cause paralysis. And second mechanism could be to uh, inhibit the process of depolarization. So there is no movement and this we can achieve by producing hyperpolarization, right? So hyperpolarization and paralysis of the worms that is caused by our magnet. It can be given orally, rapidly absorb. If absorption is good, that means we can use this against the tissue uh, infestations, right? Tissue level. So rapidly absorb, widely distributed in various tissues, metabolize in the liver, excreted mainly in the faces, contraindicated in pregnancy and children. This ivermectin. Adverse reaction in strong alloyed acid treatment, infrequent side effects if we are treating against the strong alloyds, right? So fatigue, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and rash, but these are not common. So we are not concerning with these. But in oncosarcoidosis treatment, adverse effects are the mazoti reaction, right? Just like what we have discussed in diethylcarbamazine. Uh, adverse effects, right? So, mazoti reaction includes fever occasionally, intermittent for several days, headache, dizziness, somnolence, weakness, rash, increased pruritus, right? So, these are the different characteristic features. But mazoti reaction is more specific, more related to diethylcarbamazine. Now, this prazequantal. So what you can recall by just uh, seeing this uh, uh, drug Prezequantal and already I told you the major group in which this drug is supposed to be the drug of first choice that is Prematodes. And another important point already we have discussed and most of the authorities suggest not only it is supposed to be the drug of first choice against the trematodes, but also it is supposed to be the drug of first choice against the cystodes, right? But there is another drug that can also be used in the treatment of cystodes, that is the neclozamide. So this Prezequanta is very important drug, right? So what is the mechanism of action? Drug increases cell membrane permeability to calcium. So you must remember the mechanism of action of this uh, Prezequantal and how it's going to produce its activity against the worms. It increases cell membrane permeability to calcium. So resulting in vacuolization, marked contraction again. You know, calcium is responsible to produce the contractility. So marked contraction and paralysis and dislodgement and death. Right? So pharmacokinetic of this Prezequantal rapidly absorbed after oral administration. Okay, this is very interesting point uh, that already we have discussed anything which is responsible or which, which has the ability to get absorbed so can be used for the uh, systemic infection, the uh, worms either in the form of larva or forming cysts in the different tissues, these drugs can be used because it can, uh, it has the ability to get absorbed into, into the bloodstream and from the blood, it can reach the different sites where cysts are formed due to uh, different larva of different worms, right? So it can process the blood-brain barrier, 
high level occurs in the bile extensively metabolize in the liver metabolites are inactive and excreted in urine and bile contraindicated in pregnancy and ocular cystocercosis because if uh, this drug you know cystocercosis already we have discussed very important clinical condition but fortunately not common in pakistan but because we are not using pork uh, uh, meat so pork tapeworm this is pork tapeworm larva is responsible to produce the cyst in different tissue that is called the cystocercosis so suppose cyst form in the ocular tissue due to larva form of pork tapeworm so if we use this praziquantel it will kill the break down the cyst so when the cyst uh, is ruptured chemical mediators are released and chemical reaction so it may cause the blindness so that is why praziquantel is contraindicated in ocular cystocercosis this is important point adverse effects common adverse effects include headache dizziness drowsiness and malaise less frequently gastrointestinal irritation skin rashes and fever neurologic effects can occur in the treatment of neurocystisarcosis including intracranial hypertension and seizure because it can cross the blood brain barrier so it can reach the brain so uh, it is important point because if you want to treat at the brain levels so it would be affected but at the same time you know if the drug is going to produce its activity that side is also involved in the activities related to side effects or adverse effects now this niclosamide and already i told you the drug of first choice in the treatment of which group cestoid group right cestoid group but uh, praziquantel is also preferred so both drug can be given either praziquantel or niclosamide right so scoliosis and segments of cystoids but not ova are rapidly killed on contact with niclosamide through which mechanism because inhibition of oxidative phosphorylation or to its atpase stimulating property with the death of rsid digestion of scoliosis and segment begins pharmacokinetics minimally absorb from the gastrointestinal tract neither the drug nor its metabolites have been recovered from the blood or urine alexative what with the other name is purgatives is administered prior to niclosamide to avoid the development of cystocercosis and again i am asking what is cystocercosis you know cystocercosis in cystocercosis there is formation of cyst due to larva of what due to larva of pork tapeworm right because when we kill the uh, uh, worm what will happen ova is release right from the ova larva is form and it can travel and it can which is at the different sides right so that is why alexit before uh, uh, giving the niclosamide so first we clear the intestinal lumen right so, right then we use the niclosamide alcohol should be avoided for 24 to 48 hours adverse effects produces few minor side effects which are infrequent mild and transitory they are nausea vomiting diarrhea headache skin rashes itching and abdominal comfort so this is all about so i have mentioned the important points related to this uh, anti helminthic drugs so these are the points these are the points what i have discussed with you all these points are exam oriented and if you want to add uh, further points you can go through the book especially uh, either you can use cats in review or lepen court that would be sufficient more than sufficient uh, for you so at least these are the important points that you must know okay 
thank you this is all about the today's lecture thank you very much are aap sun sakte hain mujhe तारीख बात सुनेंगे यस डेफिनेटली निकलोज अमाइट दैट इज आल्सो गिवन इन द बिगिनिंग आई टोल्ड यू ऑल द एंटी एलिमेंटिक ड्रग्स वी यूज ओरली राइट ओरली अच्छा एक क्वेश्चन है कि इज इट गोइंग टू इफेक्ट नॉर्मल फंक्शन ऑफ आवर बॉडी नॉर्मली व्हाट वी हैव डिस्कस right so if we are using short therapy short course there is no as such remarkable side effects but if we are using uh, the therapy for a prolonged period of time yes it may produce some uh, side effects right so this is the reason and you know the the drug that we are using is poorly absorbed there is no systemic problem systemic toxicity no problem but there are some local gi discomfort that is bearable ओके जी थैंक यू ओके सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम ओके लेक्चर कर दो जी सर चलिए थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच अल्लाह हाफिज़ अल्लाह हाफिज़